got their game face on today, huh? Who's ready for a great show? What's going on? Live from La Ciudad de Nueva York. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live worldwide. What's happening, people? It's Sunday shout-out day. You know, let's get down. I got a good feeling about today's show, and I don't often say that. <laughs> Joe Ackerman down in Tallahassee. Oi, what's happening, brother? Matt Melnick, what's happening in Brooklyn, man? Hope you're holding it down. Angelique, what's happening? All right. Dave Martin, what up, Drew? Much love from KCMO. Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. All right. Scott Earth, silence equals death, brother. What's happening? Hi, Wendy. How's things in Boca, baby? Say hi to my dad. Oh, you know what? My, my dad's in Delray Beach. And um, I want to, being it's Sunday shout out day, I want to shout out my dad, Arnie Stone. Where's my Arnie Stone icon? Arnie Stone just had a heart procedure. I uh, just had a um, two stints put in the other day. My dad's tough. You think you hardcore dudes are tough? My dad is a, my dad, and this is, this is what my dad says. He's, I'm an old Bronx cockroach. They're never going to kill me. That's what my dad says. <laughs> Guy's got like four stints. Like, yo, my dad's hard. My dad's hard as nails, man. 88. And uh, so we're wishing Arnie Stone the, the best. Just had, a, just had a, a, um, a heart procedure, you know? So uh, let's give all the best uh, to my dad. Also, I got to say, yo, this is like my birthday show today. Tomorrow is my birthday. So this is... This is kind of like my birthday show, and I'm excited uh, to be doing it with an old friend and with you. And I mean that. Uh, real quick, real quick, where is – let's talk about the next four shows real quick, and then we'll bring on the hardcore shutterbug, Stephen Messina. Coming up this Wednesday, we got Steve Birnbaum coming on the show. Uh, he does the uh, the band was here page on Instagram. It's going to be a cool show, like a lot of history, New York history, and a lot of location history. Like this is going to be a lot of fun, something a little different. Then Sunday, J uh, July fourth. That's is that a week? Yes, yeah, a week from today. We're doing. A, it's time for another people's show, starring you, starring you, 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 you. We're going to put the link out there. Anybody's welcome to come on the show. I want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. What's going on in your world? It's time for another people's show. Then a week after that, Sunday, July 11th, we have our old friend Sergio Vega. Absolution, Quicksand, Deftones. I must say I heard that new Quicksand track, and I like it. Um, and then Scott Helland, Deep Wound, which was Jay Maskus' first band, Outpatients, you know, all that. So – Lots of great shows coming up. Hope you are here to enjoy them with us. Um, everybody okay? Everybody behaving themselves? Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. It's my birthday. And, and then two days later is my dad's birthday. And Roger Moret from Agnostic Front's birthday. Yep. There you go. In the meantime, I'm sure you're all wondering. I am wondering too. What is up with... The hardcore shutterbug. What's up? <laughs> What's How you up? Doing? And a and an early happy birthday. Where is the happy hat? You know what? I gotta dig it out, man. You gotta, you gotta bust out the Where happy the hat. You know what? How did I not fucking think of that? <laughs> Where's yo? You know what? When you start bullshitting about photo of the day, I'm, I'm I think it's right here. I have to go grab it. Yep. You know, That's, it's a tradition now. I know. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. It is photo of the day. Wrong answers only, please. Here we go. Boom. What do we got here? Let's see. Wrong answers only, please. <laughs> here we go. Is it? Mazel. Is it? 
Hello from Wales. Make sure Sid the Kid stays awake. <laughs> People don't forget. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Come on. Is it Menudo? Is it Sepultura? <laughs> is it is it Venom? <laughs> yes, Venom is like a collective now. That's right. Uh, Venom has changed quite a bit. It's it's a, it's a collective now. Is it the cast of Friends reunion? <laughs> is it Green Jello? This is actually funny. Uh, wait, Angelique, this is funny. Is it nine zero two one zero? You would kind of think so. Is it Kiss? Is it The View? Is it Boy George and the Culture Club? Uh, here's another. This is a good one. Wait, wait, wait. Scorpions, kind of funny. But wait, where's the other one? <laughs> Frank Zappa and family. That's all right. All right. Is it a bunch of looters and rioters? Yes. <laughs> rest in, rest in, pizza, in pizzas. Someone said Slipknot. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> you know, is it New Kids on the Block? Is it the Brady Bunch? Is it the Wanderers? What's up, Jorge? Shouting out Columbia. Um, is it is it an outpatient group rehabilitation photo based out of Del Rey? Okay. I want to speak to the manager national convention. New Titans on the block. All right. What is it, bro? Let's get, let's cut right to it. You explain what let's, it is. Right here, what we're looking at. Yesterday, we did the first of uh, what we call the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live Hardcore Brunch at the Organic Grill, New York City, our favorite uh, vegan restaurant uh, run by our friend Vlad, who is awesome and a Tremendous uh, supporter of the show. Unbelievable food. And we had Craig Satari, the mighty Craig ahead of Sick of It All, uh, Rest in Pieces, etc., uh, as our guest of honor. And uh, we had a, it was, I, I don't know. I mean, you're looking at basically the whole crew there, which is the whole room. Yeah. And it was a really excellent day. Beautiful weather, excellent food. Uh, I can see five different bands in that picture right off the bat. I got a couple other ones. Hold on. Yep. It was, uh, it really, we couldn't have asked for a better day. It was a beautiful Let's day. See. Let's see which one we have next. Let me see what we got. Oh, I like this one. This one, this one's pretty funny. This one here. There you go. This yes. is, this is <laughs> Craig Satari, uh, giving Davey Hooligan some boxing pointers. And looking on is the boxing promoter, Sean Sullivan. So you can see by the look on Sean's face, he's kind of like, yeah, okay, dude. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he could have been a contender. Yeah. You know, let me see what else, what else we got here. Um, all right. Oh, oh yeah. Here you go. Here you go. Here's one with the crew with our crew and Vlad, right? There he is. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice there shot right go. there. Yep. That's, uh, you know, Vlad, Vlad really, Vlad, Vlad really did a great job, you know? Yeah, he always does. He really, he just, uh, it was so much fun. I mean, uh, Richie from Wisdom and Chains came out and, uh, you know, Craig and, um, uh, Mike Airy from uh, from Impact, who by the way gave me the Impact CD. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, one of those. We had Mike's and, uh, dad. We had you know Mike's dad is Don Airy, who plays in Deep Purple and, and was in Ozzy, right? He was yeah. on the show. We yeah, had him on the show. In fact, his birthday was last week. Here's a good shot. This is a this is a nice one. This is uh, this one kind of says it all. You know. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> So, That's a so, great one. That yeah. kind of reminds me of the shot I took of you guys at the opening of the Hardcore Chronicles film. The one with Billy and Danny and everything. That's one of my favorites. Here's the last one. I mean, how, how good does this food look? I mean, seriously. I mean, look at this shit. I mean. Oh, yeah. There's Davey Hooligan going at it right there, you know? <laughs> so. It really, it really was great. And, and I liked actually... 
uh, when Rat Bones presented him with his gift, I thought that was a nice touch. As oh well. yeah, I got that picture. You said yeah, uh, right. yeah, yeah. Rat Bones gave um, Craig Satari a gift. Yeah, and here he is holding it up. It was it was a nice, very thoughtful of him. Here, yeah, Rat Bones, Rat Bones gave Craig Satari a sealed rest in pieces under my skin cassette like that's kind of a collector's item that was cool yeah you know yeah so it really it really was a great one and uh you know what i love that we 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 do these kind of special things once in a while and uh it's just a really great way of just uh everybody connecting and, and just celebrating the whole thing you know the whole unity of it all it's <laughs> the unity man we need some unity anthems. We need more corny. <laughs> we need more corny. We need more corny hardcore unity songs. You know what? We're gonna have some on the 18th. That that much I know. So. There you go. Um, one last one here. You talked about Richie Crutch from Wisdom and Change. Yeah. He, he was there, and of course, Astoria Lou standing in the background, yep. probably staring at, at probably staring at Instagram. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but uh, it was a great day, and and we're we're gonna do it again. We're gonna. We'll, we'll we'll do it again, like in 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 a, in a month or two or three, you know. Absolutely, that's a great Sabbath shirt, by the way, that he's wearing. Yeah. What but, is uh, this that stands before me? It really really was oh. great, and you know what? It was uh, things are happening, man. And this is today, Max Cavalera. This is this is big. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for today's show. If I'm if you're excited, I'm excited, brother. Yes. Yep. All right, man. We'll talk to you in a bit. All right. See everybody right. in a bit. All right. What's happening? You know what this is, and you know why we're here. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, <sighs> Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, Chacho's Tacos, DTFM Vinyl Distro, and Generation Records. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay on the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on Facebook or Instagram. The Texas Silver Rush is a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo, photo, and social media exposure. Their client list includes rock, roll, home, home, rock and roll hall of famers. Rock and roll, hoochie coo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord and mama light my fuse. Rock and roll, hoochie Their client list includes Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Rolay, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. During this current pandemic, all information and online sales are being taken on their Facebook and Instagram page, and of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. That said, let's get it on. Let's bring our guest on. Let me clear the deck. Everybody okay out there? Nobody, uh, hey, Whitney, nice to see you. We missed you as well. well. Welcome back. The same old shit that we're doing over here. Welcome back. <laughs> so there you go. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's do it to it. Today's guest is a Brazilian singer, guitarist, and songwriter. He's known for his work in the bands Nail Bomb, Soulfly, Cavalera Conspiracy, Sepultura, Killer Be Killed, and currently with his son Igor Amadeus Cavalera, Go Ahead and Die, which is the video we saw we opened the show with. Please welcome, coming at us from Phoenix in the Grand Canyon state of Arizona, our old friend, Mr. Max Cavalera. Brother. Hello. Happy birthday. Thank you, man. How yeah, are you? Man. I'm doing great, man. Excited to be here. Yeah, Shooting yeah, the shit. We're, we're going to shoot the shit. <laughs> I guarantee you we're going to have a couple laughs and it's going to be fun, man. Hell yeah, man. It, it, it's what we do. So what's the latest, man? Like what, what's, what happened since the zombie apocalypse hit? I mean, did you have shows booked? 
you know, what, what's this last year and a couple months been like? What, what's new? Yeah, since the pandemonium, my mom calls the pand the, the pandemic, she calls it pandemonium, which is <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it's like, yeah, right. Max, how you doing during the pandemonium? It's like, I'm surviving, mom, because uh, she's down in Brazil. Uh, right. Man, we were one of the last bands touring. It was crazy. We had, we had a Soul Flight tour. The, the shit was hitting the fan. We're watching the news as the tour is going. Um, and then we had a festival in Mexico called Hell in Heaven. And uh, it was the last festival on earth. This is the last place that you're going to have 40,000 people. That's it. <laughs> it's like, had a, it was a weird feeling, you knowing that, you know, like the world is going to shut down. You're doing probably the last two shows for yeah. a long ass time. So we gave it all. You know, I, I had one show with uh, with my brother, Igor. Uh, uh -huh. So we did Return to Roots and crowd went fucking crazy. And then the next day, um, Soulfly was playing. And it was funny because we were early in the bill. We were like in the middle of the bill, but a bunch of bands didn't show up. So the promoter came and was like, do you guys want to headline this shit tonight? <laughs> <laughs> like hell yeah we'll headline you know okay bo okay boys we need to do the extended set right <laughs> yeah right. yeah it's like uh they put us in a big uh, dressing room because we were not staying on that dressing room i tell you that much we right. show up it's like oh dude this is yeah this is how the big rollers roll um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and we did the show and we're worried about getting home you know air the, the airport was chaos Mexico City Airport it was chaos AD in flesh, like just people everywhere trying to get out. But uh, yeah, we made it home and then everything shut down, man. You know, the world and, shut out, shut down. It was crazy. And and I and you're down there in Arizona, and, and Arizona was sort of like a like a, a like kind of kooky in the beginning, right? I mean, it was like like I went down, I know that it took a while for, for sort of Arizona to get hit with the whole thing, you know. But but it did like everywhere else, right? Yeah, it, we, we were really worried, you know, because it was like they were showing the, the statistics on TV, and Arizona was on the red, and all this, uh, you know, just were like, what the, you know, what's going on? In fact, when it got a little better, I think we went to Orange or something, and we look at Florida, and Florida then was really it was the worst. So I, we told our son Igor. Get the hell out of Florida. Come to Arizona. It's a little yeah. safer, better here, man. You know, you get, you know, be a little bit more protected. That's uh, where I was in Florida with my dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, I never experienced anything. It's, it's kind of like out of a movie, man. You know, it's like, oh yeah, it's like what, what is going on? You know. So he came here. We did. We got together. We did the whole record, but um, it, had to find a ways to stay uh, active. The first three months insanity it's like like you don't know what to do with yourself you know it's like what am, what am i doing i have so much free time man yeah, I, never yeah, just, yeah. I never had this much free time you know and and i did i did um i know uh our man Ke our kevin just uh mentioned the the max uh he's kevin says max fucking love the max tracks now uh let me explain to people out there that may not know max has been doing a thing called max tracks where he's sort of breaking down a lot of you know his music, Sepultura and 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 the other stuff. And uh, did you start that during the pandemic, or was that around before then? Uh, there was during. It was my wife's idea, which is, was a great yeah. idea. She's like, yeah. I think you need to do something where you stay connected with your fans and show them how you play all this. this you, you got like a billion songs, <laughs> and, and, and you're telling me all the time about how you wrote those songs. They don't know uh, that you, me, and you know. Uh, um, it'd be great. So we just did it, but it's, it's it's so punk rock, man. It was like we didn't really have any. Uh, we didn't go all out and try to make a big production. I wanted to be a really, really old school, raw feeling. So she just sits in the living room with the cell phone. I sit in, in where I write most of my records. Anyway, this is the setup I use. The same four track machine, drum machine, boom. I got a big ghetto blaster in front of me, my speaker, and it's all it's all live. It's on Facebook. And we do it live for free, and a lot of people watch it. Then I just bullshit with the fan, tell all kinds of stories about the songs, and 
Uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's cool, man. It, it kept it me really occupied, um, and I like the format. I like the rawness of it. I like the. Uh, I call it favela because you know favela is the Brazil is slums. <laughs> it's, right. it's favela. No, it's, great. it's favela style. It's the same thing. You know what I did in the pandemic? I started this show. I was stuck at yeah. my dad's. I was stuck at my dad's, and you know. Somebody made the suggestion, and and I launched the show in from my dad's kitchen, and and here we are, 140 episodes or something later, you know. So how great, how great is that? That cool things like that are born out of necessity, you know. Um, yeah. Or, or yeah. It, you know, which is which is really cool, because uh, because like a lot of people know me, I'm not, I, I'm not a social media. Guy. I don't have a phone, you know. Right. Uh, right. By, <laughs> which is like my my grandson the other day, like freak out on me, like. I don't. I can't believe you don't have a phone. You're the only guy on the planet that doesn't have a phone. All my friends have phones, you know. And it's like, yeah, oh. I, I, I can't believe Grandpa doesn't have a phone. That's insane. Yeah. Um, all and, my you know, teenage, like, I, all not, my teenage be, friends have phones. How do you not have a phone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm not. I'm not really uh, you know into the whole thing, but um, little by little, you got to do a couple things like to. Um, adapt with it you know so you can't really stay in a cave by yourself you just you just die you know so we do yep. the you know we start doing the max tracks um we do you know a lot of podcast requests we, we get stuff like that um doing your show thanks to anthony yeah great for anthony, you know, anthony made it happen made it happen man you know and uh it's really i'm actually using his light too he gave me a he, he <laughs> let me borrow <laughs> That's the only pro thing of the Max Trax is the light. <laughs> <laughs> I got one here too. Hey, let's yeah. talk about let's talk about how you came up. Like, uh, let's go way back and and did you grow up in a musical household? How did music come into your life? And 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 what were your very early influences? So yeah, my dad's Italian and my mother was Brazilian. My dad was a huge music fan, uh, so he really like loved. Italian music, opera, and I remember sacred every day coming from work from one to three. That was like like a siesta they do in Europe. He did that in Brazil. He came home from work at one o'clock and ate lunch and then sat in his living room. Nobody could bother him. He put his opera and lay down mm. and take a little nap, you know. It was like the sacred thing that he did. And he but he also played acoustic guitar. And play a, a, so I, I truly believe that the, the music uh, actually comes from his side of the family, the Italians. Mm. Uh, you know, we had this you know Italian dinners where everybody's shouting. There's 20 people at the table. Uh, at one time, I saw one of my uncles throw a plate because my <laughs> my co my cousin wouldn't shut up. So he threw a plate across the table and hit my cousin in the forehead. It was blood gushing, and this is this is a Sunday, you know, dinner memory that stays with me forever just my 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 cousin with the bloody forehead spaghetti and <laughs> spaghetti and blood in front of him <laughs> oh i i can i can relate my one time i insulted my sister at the dinner table and she threw a glass mug across the table and hit me right in the face Bam. yeah yeah you're so passionate passionate crazy dinner crazy sunday which is i love the sunday tradition i i keep that yeah. alive in my family i do that here with my family now, you know, it's like, it's, it's less, it's not as, you know, we don't have like a big diner table like we used to have in Brazil, but everybody, a lot of the family comes over and we, I play music outside barbecue and this and that. So, um, we didn't like music though. Me and Igor, we didn't give a shit about music until uh -huh. we were like nine years old. It was all football, soccer, man. That was our life. <laughs> That was our life. My dad would come take us to the games. We are big Palmeiras fans. The and, green and, this team. Is, and this is and, and this is Belo Horizonte, right? The, this is São Paulo. I was born in okay. me and me and my brother okay. were born in Belo because my okay. mother my mother forced my dad to to go to Belo for us to be born where she was born, and then we moved back to São Paulo. I got it. I it was it was like one of those crazy things. Of I, I still don't. I ask her all the time, "Why? What was that all about? Why? Why do we just were born in São Paulo? That's where we live. Why you have to go back to Belo? It's a ten-hour, you know, right. bus drive just to be born." <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah. you know, we we just love uh, soccer and and going to the games and playing in the neighborhood. Um, we had a house in the in the in near uh, Praia Grande, near Santos. We go there every weekend, and all that is, is is going great. You know, we had a pretty. My dad was a, a, a ambassador of Italy in São Paulo, so he had a really good job and made pretty good money. Uh, so we we were re living real nice. You know, we had a we had a good apartment. Um, and then out of the blue, he died, man. And that's uh, that's when everything just turned. 360 degrees transformation in our family, life. That, family, family, that, family tragedy. That's the, the the turning point. It's crazy. Wow. I talk about that in my book, man. It's it was because yeah. we were we went to a fishing trip, and um, he started having, you know, heart start hurting, chest pains. We were in a boat. We came back to the car, and I hold him the whole time to the hospital. You know, I was behind him. I I was holding on him, man. Wow. And I got got to the hospital. He died just like that. So it was like Ooh. like a shock. Nine year old, shocked man. Totally fucking freaked out. And and, and you're nine, and Igor was what seven, six. I, Igor is eight. He's one yeah. year old younger. Wow. So, and then when that happened, we were still in São Paulo for another for another year. That's where one of our hippie cousins. Took us to see Queen in, uh, you know, touring for the game record. Wow. And, uh, in the same stadium that we see all these great soccer games, we go see Queen. And we're yeah. like, we didn't like music. We're just going to go. My my hippie cousin wants to show us this, <laughs> this thing called Queen. We don't even know what it is. <laughs> right, right, right. And then you, it's like instant transformation we were rock and rollers that night the the next morning i went out and bought queen life killers igor bought kiss alive too we were rock and rollers like as i was like goodbye soccer we're rock and rollers now <laughs> it's it's power listen it's powerful it's the power of the mob right it's it was, like man it, it, it's like Pink Floyd, the wall, right? This, it, it's just the power of the mob, the, the crowd. The, the, it's just, it's, it's intense, man. And, and it was, I think, I think it was the moment too. Okay. So we just lost yeah. our dad, you know, we, yeah, I was right. still feeling, I was still feeling the loss of my dad. And this thing came into my life. I was like, came, came from up there, man, you know, like yeah. one of those had to happen type things. And, and then um, the show was mesmerizing queen live if people haven't seen it yet it's it, watch the videos man they yeah. were on on the front runner of of the uh, arena rock you know freddie mercury had the crowd in palm of his hands for the two hours you know it's like showman this is showmanship man yeah and and, and it's amazing because queen comes in uh, comes into play on this show a lot big influence on guys our age you know even even you know, even the Metallica guys and everybody, you know, Queen was just huge, huge influence, man. Just, and like you said, the showmanship, the guitar work, it's you know, it, great shit, man. Tie your I mother mean, down, all that shit. It's just, yeah. Years later, I got, we got lucky. We did Chaos AD in Wales at Rockfield Studios. That's where the uh -huh. Queen recorded Bohemian Rhapsody. Wow. And they had the piano there. We had, we got to touch the <laughs> piano, man. It's like, it's like Midas touch, you know, you put in a hand yeah. on something. It's like like uh, it's, yeah. it's like it's, it's like the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the Sacred Scrolls. <laughs> yeah, we touch this thing, man. And I remember their producer came by and saw us there, and uh, I don't think he really liked it very much. He was there for like one second, uh, but Andy Wallace was, was producing the record, right. um, and and uh, it was a blast, and and. I remember also Black Sabbath was like one mile away from us in another studio. Right. So we, we we walked there to, to to go meet Black Sabbath. We got there. They were on break. And the, the, the guy let us walk through the studio. And I stole a bunch of Black Sabbath picks and put it in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not leaving here empty-handed. Empty yeah. I'm, taking, I'm taking some souvenirs. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony so, Naomi. So, so why, why did it that you gravitated to guitar and Igor to drums. Was that a conversation? Like, how did that work out? 
So yeah, so Igor was born to play drums because in the soccer games that I was talking to you about when he was uh -huh, six, uh -huh. seven, yep. he would, my dad would put him with the drummers and he would, he would jam with, right. with, the, with 40 other soccer guys during the game. He was like the mascot of the team, <laughs> you know? So I was like, I wanted to be a drummer. I actually thought about it. I, I really wanted, and I, but I realized He's fucking way better than me, man. He's been he's been training on soccer games. He already got the, the layup on me by a mile. Um, and I remember my dad had the acoustic guitar that used to sing acoustic Italian songs. So me, like a like a total shithead, <laughs> I, I, I grab a bunch of glue and I broke a mirror and I put a bunch of mirrors on the guitar to try to make it more metal, look more metal. I ruined it. I ruined the I ruined my dad's guitar. It was a beautiful Italian guitar and I, I ruined it with, with with glass, and I wanted to look like Kiss. Well, so. did Paul Stanley did Paul Stanley did Paul Stanley had a guitar like that. I remember. That, that's exactly what I got it from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that, and then it was great because when you would see them live, the light would hit it, and it would like bounce all over the arena. It was well, fucking badass, actually. You know, yeah, mine didn't do that because we, we were just in the room. It was just the light from the room, and <laughs> we're we're missing the arena factor. <laughs> 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 so, so, so you pick up guitar. Who were very early influences for you? Like, what, what was like a, a, a was big, big inspiration guitar wise early on? So yeah, I, I remember I tried to. I was self taught a lot of the stuff I learned. But I remember the first riff I learned was Heaven and Hell, which is a bit complicated actually. And I kind of like got the lick after like a week of practicing. I got it, and then I went to take guitar lesson with this guy. And he first he tried to, to 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 teach me Brazilian bossa nova, and I know I was I wasn't having it. Man. I was like, no, no, this this is not what I want, man. I want rock. I want to rock, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's all like, he's all showing me Brazilian, you know, bossa nova, Tom Jobim scales, and then he's all like, you gotta hear John Mac Laughlin. He kept talking about this guy, John Mac Laughlin is the god. And I, I know who he is now. He's great. I, I respect. Yeah, John, him. John John McLaughlin. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, he actually got. A, he has a he has a record called Belo Horizonte, which is oh. fucking. It's hilarious. It, it is like crazy that he has a record name uh, of our town where we were born. Um, John but, John McLaughlin, Carlos Santana, Paco de Lucia, like those yeah. guys were like that in that mix. Yeah. 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 So um, I kind of gave up after a week of that. I. Didn't go anywhere with that teacher. So I just figured I'm just going to learn on my own. The same way I learned uh, to make lyrics was translating the records at home. Right. Hours and hours translating Black Sabbath songs, um, you know, uh, Iron Maiden. Those are the but, early but you, but you had an ear for it early on. You, you had the ability. Like some people, you like can't figure anything out. But I guess, I guess you had somewhat of an ear for it right off the bat. Yeah, I think we we got that. I think the music kind of came from from my dad, uh -huh. and, and my mom. My mom, the cool thing about my mom, my mom was a model, you know, so early in her career. So she also had a little bit of taste of uh, stages and and photography and flashing and stuff like that. So somehow, subconscious, I think both the connection of both my dad playing guitar, my mom being a model, the connection of those gave birth to us being, uh, you know, do what we do. Um, sure. but, but I remember going through my dad's records after he died and it was like mostly uh, opera, Italian opera and stuff. But I did, I found Black Sabbath, uh, the first Black Sabbath record in wow. his collection <laughs> and, and Led Zeppelin IV. And I was like, what the fuck? This is crazy. I never knew Like my dad had these records, man. It was cool. It was cool to find that out. I, I maybe he bought it out of curiosity. Um, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think he was a Black Sabbath fan, but he did have the records. I know. I know that um, Venom and Celtic Frost were were very early influences of yours as well. But did any of the American hardcore stuff come into your orbit early on in the game? There, not that early. Not not yeah. not uh, maybe maybe a little bit Ramones. Ramones. Yeah. Cause I think okay. I think some of the Ramones record were license and they came out in brazil sure. so we could we could get them um i remember one of the tapes i got it was from this 
record store called Woodstock. And um, one side was Hellhammer and was the EP Apocalypse Raids. And the, the, the side B was Discharge. Hear nothing, Ooh, see nothing, wait. say nothing. And I love both, me and Igor love, but we didn't know that one was a Mohawk, some some bunch of Mohawk motherfuckers, yeah, and the yeah. other one was a bunch of long hair black metal yeah. dudes, you know? Yeah. Um, we just love the music. We love the energy and the rawness. They're raw as fuck. And that, like, I think mean, that's the birth of, of our, our love for hardcore, me and Igor. I think it was, it was definitely born out of Discharge that started it all. And then yeah. we started discovering uh, Finnish hardcore, and then a little bit later, New York hardcore, which was huge, you know. The Discharge stuff still holds up to this day. It's still incredible. You know, hear nothing, see nothing. That record, it, it why, and all that shit is still hard as fuck, man. That stuff is still great, man. Good yeah, shit. you know, it's uh, we, we had a chance about, uh, it was like two years ago, we played Birmingham, and Igor got in touch with, with JJ and Bones and invited them to the show. Mm -hmm. And and so we got a jam. We got we're doing a discharge jam, you know. <laughs> and we and we did it, man. And and I remember. So I had all my stuff set up. My guitar sounds the way I play, you know. The minute Bones plug his guitar in, you got that wall of sound, that discharge wall of sound. And I was like, yeah, it's gotta be in the hands of the of the you know, the sound comes from the hand. It's the way you fucking played that shit you know with the power um and it was just an incredible jam and uh we hang out all day with them it was it was an amazing amazing day um and a little before that um uh, sepultura played brixton academy and it was it was my birthday and gloria somehow there's some crazy stuff that she does gloria somehow um contacted uh cal the singer of discharge he was working in a post mail he wasn't singing anymore. He was wow. delivering letters. He was a postman, and she brought him to the show. And wow. we play, we play here, see nothing, see nothing in Brixton. The crowd had no idea what we were playing. They were like, "What is this? They're like, what's going on here?" It's like, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that happens. I think that happened a couple. Yeah. yeah, I love it. It was. A, it was. She. 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 She made that as a present for me, as a birthday present. Contacted him, brought him to the show. And we jammed that with, with that. And then years later, I did the jam with Bones and JJ. Um, and I always had the dis the white, I had a white guitar, very iconic BC Rich guitar with a discharge sticker. And people around the world always connected Absolutely. that this that discharge influence was always there. Here's a question from our friend uh, Ben Lejeau. What brand was Max's first electric guitar? Uh, so yeah, so I don't remember. I don't recall the brand, but I, I remember the nickname I gave it was Podrera, means the rotten. Because <laughs> <laughs> the thing was just rotten, man. It's like, I remember going like this, you know, you slide, and they're like, uh -huh. this is a wood coming in my finger, and I'll be bleeding. This thing was like falling falling apart as I was as I was playing. It was crazy. Um, and I remember also that when I first bought the guitar, I brought it home, and... You know, I didn't know you need an amplifier and distortion. So I just went like this, like, where's the sound? And then the guy, I went back to the store. The guy's like, wait, man, you need an amplifier. <laughs> and, and if you want to get that chuggy sound, you need a distortion pedal. Right. And I was like, oh, man, you got to buy all that shit? It's like, yeah, you, you got to buy all that shit. And that, that's how it starts, bro. Yeah, that and a lot more. And, it, and it, thus the odyssey begins, right? Yeah, yeah. So... I got, I got the, I got the, uh, we, <laughs> the, the Sepultura, the four of us, we, we, we gather money and we bought our first amp and we plug everything on one amp, bass, yeah. vocals, guitar. There's like, you, every, every, every whole <laughs> amp had it, we plug it with something. <laughs> That's awesome. Is oh, this, man. is this a picture? Is this the original? Is this the first lineup here? That's, yeah, that's the pretty much. Not the Pretty very much. first. The very the first was, was was me and Igor and uh, another singer. Right. Uh, we didn't we didn't have a bass at first. I see. Uh, but this this is the first EP. Um, and the the cool thing about this picture is the bullet belts that we we're wearing. Those are made out of double A batteries. Oh wow! Yeah, we made them by hand. 
because we couldn't in, in Brazil you cannot buy bullet belts. It's against the law. It's kind of makes sense. You, you cannot buy any any military uh, wardrobe at all. No pants. It kind of no makes shirt. sense. It kind of so, makes sense. I gotta say. The first you know? time I came to America, I went to an army store. I lost my shit. I was like, "This is the I'm in Disneyland. This is the coolest thing ever." You mean you can place, buy you can buy bullet belts? There's that place in L.A. Uh, that uh, that it's in that movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas. He wanders into that that right. um, yes. yeah yeah you know the, the place is like the size of a supermarket and it's all like military shit and they got everything. You know you know you're. Awesome. you're yeah, you need military toilet paper to wipe your fucking ass. They have it, you know. It's yeah. That was my reaction when I first went into a military store, and you could buy the stuff. So I bought the the, the camouflage pants, and I oh. wore the shit out of them. But yeah, like at that, we wanted to look a little bit like the European bands that we like, uh, right? Like, like, like you know, Creator, Destruction, yeah. right? Um, so Igor had the brilliant idea. Let's just get a bunch of double A's. We spray paint them with silver. We- <laughs> <laughs> we super glue them into a belt and you take the picture from far away photographer don't come too close or they're yeah. gonna know it's fake like denise uh, says your your diy game was strong brother yeah yeah it was we did crazy shit man yeah, yeah, yeah. Sur- su- survival you know yeah and i know this is a later shot but i i like th- i like this i like this shot as well um I, I like this is I guess when the 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 white this is when the white sneakers came in. I like this, you know. Yeah, this is a little bit more of our trash era. Yep. Igor's got a Igor's got a corrosion shirt. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, this cool. is kind of like we're starting to listen to a little bit more uh, trash bands mixed with. We're coming from the black metal, death metal, but starting to open your mind up. You know, your mind yeah. is open up, and and more influences are coming in. You know, Metallica and, and and Dark Angel, different things. Ramones. I used to rock out like like a Ramones shirt. We used to have like a cover band that played Sex Pistols, um, <laughs> drunk. We, we it was called Guerrilla, and I used to play the bass with a bottle of rum. You know, yeah, I drink the go. whole rum, and I like I don't need no peak. I played the bass with a bottle, <laughs> dang, dang. like as caveman as you can get. <laughs> Yeah, like Doyle from the Misfits, just punches who just punches the guitar. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. and it was and it was Paulo's bass, like the Sepultura bass player. He fucking he wanted to kill me. He's like, that, it's my only bass, man. You can't be hitting with a fucking bottle. Like, I oh, fuck you. This is punk rock. <laughs> was this was this the first time you guys played New York? This King Diamond Sacred Reich Sepultura. Was this the first time you guys played New York? No, no, that was uh, the first time was a place called Zone DK, which is a, yeah, yeah, that's the name, that's the name club. That's you know, you know, I, I, I met you guys. I don't know if it, I don't know, I remember your brother, but it, it, it's Zone DK. The night before you were going to play, I was there and I was there because I grew up with Laz Pina, who's in El Nino now. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I grew, yeah. yeah, we all went, grew up in the same neighborhood, went to John F. Kennedy High School in the Bronx. And I remember he was so excited to meet you guys, uh, and, and he introduced me to you guys. And it was the, your first night in New York City. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, so 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 Zondi K was our first show, and yep. and it was was, was kind of crazy. We played the show, and then we walking around the club, and there's like there's girls in all black leather holding yep. guys in dog collars. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the guys are walking around in, on their fours like dogs. It was like. What the fuck is going on here? This is crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I have a vivid memory of talking to you. I'm not I, I, talking to you guys, whether you – I know you – I remember your brother. But when you first came, you were there. You came and scouted the club out the night before. We were there. Because, yeah. you, know, you know, Antidote, we played there all, we played there all the time. And that was a funky ass – that was a funky fucking place, man. So – and then I think – the the Ritz that was the big show that we did that was like and that was I think there's some more bands that played that night that are not on that flyer. Was that, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Here, here, now this is this happened later. You came back. This is this isn't that same trip, is it? It's um, some C eighty nine. Oh man, is there a date my, on my, this? My, 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 oh yeah, my, no, this is this is eighty nine. This says eighty nine. Yeah, so this might be on the same tour. It just kind of yeah. started as on decay. Right. This is the this is the show we met uh, Gloria. Gloria was at this show because she was managing Sacred Reich. I see. 
Uh, and right. this was a cool show, man, because it was packed, or the Ritz was packed, King Diamond, Halloween, Halloween night, everybody dressed up and all this. And uh, yeah. I remember my guitar broke on the third song, Inner Self, and I was like, fuck <laughs> this. I just stage dived in the crowd with the microphone, <laughs> and I sang the whole song, you know, with the crowd holding me up, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever, you know. So um, I don't know if that anything to to do with, with why – she liked us a lot that night. You know, she liked the show a lot and, and offers you to work for us for free for a year, you know. Um, but, yeah, we met at that show. Um, also, we met the owner of Roadrunner, Case Wessels. That's right. And Monty. Monty was there. Monty Connor. Um, Bo- you know, Borivoy, all those guys. Don K. Yep. You know. Yeah, and, that's, and- that's, a, that's, the, that's a, a different flyer. Yeah. And let me say, and let me say that, of course, Monty Connor, Borvoy. I mean, the, these these people turned out turned to be huge supporters of, of Sepultura. Like they, like Monty Connor and Borvoy, they were big, big uh, here in America. They really, they really believed in the band, man. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. I mean, the the, the uh, we were in contact with Monty from Brazil when we were living in Brazil. But then I got I got kind of kind of lucky. A friend of mine gave me a free ticket to go to New York for two days if I had I bring some records to for him to some record store. Um, and then, but I had to go as a Pan Am employee, so I had to have my I had to have my hair backed up. I had to to, to borrow a suit, so you know a suit and tie. <laughs> I look ridiculous. I look like you know. Like, Kind of like I, I I don't know like like Scarface or something, but um, <laughs> I show up in the airport. Monty and 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 Donkey, they pick me up. They all like laughing. I'm like you fucking assholes. <laughs> and That's then great. and then and then I remember walking the streets of New York. Man, this is this is cool. You're gonna like this. I cross paths with Harley, and I fucking recognize him. So I stop him. Like you're Harley from the Cro-Mags, right? It's like yeah. Can we take a picture? And Harley, all right, hold on. It was it was it was snowing. It was cold as fuck. He takes all his jackets off. He called it like shirtless. You know, <laughs> he wants to be shirtless in the picture. And That's we took great. a picture, man, and and went brought back to Brazil. Show all my friends. Like, dude, I met Harley from the Chromax, dude. In, in the street, in the streets of New York, you know. Yeah, you couldn't make it better. And then, like five minutes yeah. later, I got I got mugged. I there was really? like, you know, there's a guy that put a knife in my throat. I had five dollars in my pocket. And I got my, it's like, and I was thinking, man, I gotta, I get out of Brazil to get mugged in New York. This is, this is messed up. That's crazy. But, uh, yeah. But it was just, it was no, and then, and then I, I think Borivo and Monty, they organized uh, for me to do a signing session, a slip disc. And I right. think we had like two people show up. And I think one of them was the owner of the store. Um, it was the, the, it was, that was, that was the signing session. <laughs> You know, people hey, don't but, know who you were, man. Hey, but listen, you know, it, it's perseverance pays off, man, and it did for you guys. You guys worked hard, and you had an incredible work ethic, man. I remember you guys weren't afraid to work hard, man, and and it's amazing how many bands are afraid to work hard, you know? Yeah, that's what I tell a lot of a lot of people tell you, know, you know, suggestions and what can I tell them to um, better off their situation? Like you gotta, things not gonna fall. From the sky to you, you gotta go get him. You know, yeah, I love this shot, man. This CBGB shot's great. That was yeah. cool. Uh, now, I, I think your brother said that you weren't playing. You just went down on a pilgrimage to just like see it, right? Yeah, yeah. We just we were near there, staying somewhere, and we knew about it. So we we're like, let's go there and take a picture. Let's go, you know. Uh, but I ended up going with Igor to a show. Um, we went to see Iceman. Ooh. I think it was it was Iceman and uh-huh. somebody, maybe Agnostic Front was playing. It was one of those matinees, sure. hardcore matinee Sunday. Right. And we went and, and and we were the only like maybe two people with long hair. I thought this is it. We're getting killed for sure. For sure we're getting killed here today, you know. <laughs> uh but uh yeah, nah, it, it, it was cool. Nobody nobody fucked with us. Um it was it was a great show. Uh, I, I always really, really wish we were, we had played CBGBs. It was one of those things that didn't happen that it would have yeah. been cool. Um, to, just to be part of your history that you played there. You know, we play, you know, we play Hammersmith in, in London and 
so many other cool venues. The you know uh, the Melkweg, the Milkway in Amsterdam. The Milky Way, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so you were just went there to take a picture. It was like a, an iconic place, man. You know. Did any um, at this point, a little bit later on, did any New York hardcore bands uh, start to resonate with you or speak to you? Oh yeah, so by by this time, like I said, like meeting meeting Harley was a huge deal. I was fucking freaking out. I went home freaking out. You know, I yeah. always always love Age of Core. It was still one of my favorite records. Yeah. Um, I got it here. What do you got? What do you got, bro? So, so yeah, I got this copy here. Yeah, that has the uh, sensor. Wow, nice. Got the sensor lyrics. <laughs> I don't know why it says sensor there, but uh, we'll, we'll ask, hold on. We'll ask our people. Anybody know why that Asia Quarrel? Why why it says censored? I don't remember myself. Is that on Rock Hotel Records? Profile. Oh, profile. Oh, profile. Yeah, that's the original. That's the original shit, bro. That's the original one, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, it, it says is. Rock Hotel. It says Rock Hotel on the side here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I love that picture. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, it it's like, like Jamie said, it's hard. Hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's cool. that's. That's a that's a pinnacle of 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 New York hardcore, man. So yeah, so back in Brazil, uh, there was all kinds of uh, you know we were leaning to the whole uh, we're starting to discover more and they were sick of it all. Was big agnostic front. Always we had this Italian friend. It was like like he was crazy, like really into big into cocaine and all this crazy shit. Um, you know, he was like a like a kind of like a crazy dealer, but he loved agnostic front. He said he always had an Italian accent. Yeah, agnostic front is the, the best, uh, the best in uh, Hardy Corey. He was like a big maf mafia Italian guy. And I always, uh, yeah, man, cause for alarm. What a, what a record, man. Yeah. Yep. Amazing. Let me ask you about the, now. I know we're jumping around here, but it's kind of what we do. Um, let me ask you about this because you, you mentioned sick of it all. And then this came up, I guess, sometime later, right? This uh, new Titans on the Block tour, right? Fuck yeah, I love that tour. That's one of my favorite tours we ever did. And, and that tour came out because Gloria tried to get Sepultura on the Clash of the Titans. And we got refused. We couldn't, you know, they, they wouldn't put us on. So she got pissed off at them and say, well, you know what? I'll make my own tour and I call it New Titans on the Block. Uh, and then I think she got even sued by the new kids on the block. They tried to oh, sue her geez. because of, because of their name. But uh, unbelievable. But it was cool. It was just like we had a little say on it on picking the bands. Me and Igor were like pulling for sick of it all. Like, let's bring sick of it all. Bring the hardcore. And it'd be yeah. cool because you know we had. But Sacred Reich is more metal. Napalm yeah. Death is like that grindcore shit. Is on the verge yeah. of it. Uh, and it it was the coolest melting. Pots. Some of those shows, I'm telling you, man, some of the craziest fucking shows I still from to, to today is with some of those East Coast uh, New Titans to shows like in uh, yeah. up in Albany fights. Mm -hmm. The whole thing of our show was fights. <laughs> yeah, they were jumping off the stage with guitar, beating people with their guitar microphone stands, and she was like, "Yeah, it was real. It was the real deal, man. It was awesome." That's uh. That's Albany. That's upstate New York. I know Bob Riley from uh, uh, from Stigmata. You're you're watching. You know Troy, New York. You know is another. We've met the enemy, and the enemy is us, man. Up, you know, Albany for a couple years was like going to Vietnam, bro. Was, yeah. <laughs> you know and those show, and those shows, those shows were crazy, and we we made a really good bond with 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 sick of it all. Um, it was like it became like we really hang out a lot with them. Um, and 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 Pete and Lou and I, I, me and Igor watched them sacredly every night. It was like we're gonna watch Sick of It All. This is the coolest thing ever. We have a band in our tour that we just love to watch every night. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was and, and they're just jumping, just just chaos on the stage. It was fantastic. It was it was great. They're, uh, they're, and then they're still great. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember the the, the drummer. 
uh, I forgot the name of, 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 of the drummer at that time. Um, he he color he painted his hair and jumped in the pool and his whole face swelled up from the from the from from the hair dye that he used. It was crazy. Why do I think the drummer was this guy who's coming on the show? I think it's I think it's EK who's coming EK. on the show. Yo, he's it. coming on the show. That you got you gotta mention that story to him, man. This is Bro. That, was, that was insane. <laughs> hey, they all come through these doors sooner or later, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, you know? and that was, yeah. A, it was a it was a great tour, and uh, yep. yeah, we 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 uh, love to to wear their shirts all the time, you know, and and we we create a bond. We we always see. I think the last Soulfly tour, uh, Lou came to the show in New Jersey. We were hanging out. He was supposed to go to Brazil, and then you know the shit got canceled. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, it was it, that was one of the coolest tours. Um, and that was during the Arise tour, which was 280 shows in 80 countries or, or 75 countries. It was like it was an inhuman number of shows. We never <laughs> done a, it was we never done a tour like that ever since. It was, it was a cry. It was a crime against humanity. <laughs> it was man. It was it was like the first time in Indonesia. Um, I remember this guy, the guy from Indonesia. He was. Uh, he was an owner of the biggest cigarette company in Indonesia. So he had a lot of money. So he brought Sepultura to Indonesia. And and it was the only time we complained about having too much advertising. Most of the time you tell the, the, the promoter, hey, man, you need more advertising. You know, we need more people right, to the right. show. This uh -huh. time was the opposite. Like, you did too much, man. There, you know, there's too much. He printed on on like on the on the Rolling Stone newspaper magazine of Indonesia, he printed the whole itinerary where we are gonna be at, at at all times. So there was people everywhere we went. There was like wow, a thousand fans everywhere. Um, and and one of the craziest thing I ever seen was like we had to have a meeting with all these government people. They wanted to know how our show was gonna be, and then. Um, it was like generals and, and big people from the country. And then they say, how, how, is, how are you guys going to act? And then I look at Andres and say, hey, Andres, stand up and headbang and show these guys how you headbang. <laughs> so, so, so he gets up and he heads, headbangs and everybody start clapping. All these generals guys are like clapping. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? This is insane. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> and then... And then we do the show, but the show is getting out of hand. The kids are, are rioting, circle pitting. The government, you know, the, the, the military bum rush the stage. They have these huge bamboo sticks. They're hitting oh. all the, everybody with the bamboo sticks. They made 40,000 people sit down in the wow. middle of the show. And I'm like, man, that's, this is a vibe killer. How you go, how you go back to the energy of the show after, you, you, after the police made 40,000 people sit down in complete silence man you know it was like fucking crazy crazy and they're I'm trying sure, to send i'm sure in those early days you guys playing in, in in south america must have come across some really bizarre situations man yeah yeah we saw some crazy like on this show there was a lot of sandals people kept all the fans through sandals there was a pile of sandals behind the stage after the show it was like a mountain of fucking sandals man uh, and then I remember one time we played like Chile and it was like 2000 people. And I start, I decided to walk to the venue at two in the morning after the show and those chunks of hair through all the whole floor. It was like, Ooh. people lost their hair, like big chunks too. Like, it looked like, it looked like big cockroaches, man, like Ooh. big chunks of hair through all the whole floor of the whole, the whole uh, gymnasium. It was crazy. Oh, God. Yeah. It was it was definitely definitely fun, man. You know, like we we went to Russia for the first time, um, and that was all in the same tour. You know, Indonesia, Russia, uh, and, crazy. And and Arise, of course, and and before that, Beneath Beneath the Remains was the first Roadrunner record, right? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, and then Arise, and and so it it must have been exciting, of course, at that point to be on a label that's really behind you and pushing you and getting you out there right yeah yeah it was, it, everything we had was great at that time we, you know, we had a great management Gloria was, was yep. great at creating tours 
Um, I, I remember like like nobody knows it's because they weren't they couldn't see it, but it'll be like two three in the morning. It should be in the phone with Europe, creating all these tours, man. You know, making sure this shit is gonna go smooth. Uh, and she was always in the front lines, too, man. She's tough. This, yeah. This, yeah, she's like, I, I remember she got arrested in in uh, in New Mexico. We had a riot. They pulled the plug on us, stopped the whole show, and one of our roadie got got in the cop's face, got arrested, and the guy goes, anybody say one more thing, I'm arresting everybody. And Gloria, of course, go, this is bullshit. <laughs> and then, and then, she, then she gets arrested, and, and it's, it was, it's a total fucking shit show. So she was always in the front lines, man, which, which was amazing, like to have, a, to have a manager traveling with you. Like a lot of bands don't do that, man. Even today, a lot of bands don't have that, you know. So we had that. Um, and and uh, so yeah, so and then Roadrun, of course, really, really was always always behind uh, Monty Case, always really behind the band, and uh, you know they they accept all the crazy ideas that we had because I always had crazy ideas when we did Chaos AD, we decided to record a, a acoustic song in a Welsh castle, you know, one of those crazy ideas like a Brazilian band recording an acoustic song in a Welsh castle. Let's go, <laughs> let's let's go for it. Makes no sense, but. Uh, you know, it was like it was they, they were behind of all those things. Uh, and I always love the, the traveling side of it. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's why I love your show. You had your brother on your show because I'm a, a huge fan of, of your brother, Evan, man. It was it was, oh, it was great. And that, that show, you know, the Josh Gates show, we watched that yeah. all the fucking time. And me and Gloria, huge fans. It's, yeah. He's seen he's seen some fucking shit, man. Your yo, brother has yo, seen he, some shit. Yo, he's seen some shit. And, and you know. They, they bring him on the show sometimes because, you know, I don't know if you saw that. Ep well, no, he did. He did that ghost show and like some shit happened with him where he got blasted back 20 feet and he got all these scratches on his arms. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, like my, my, my brother's done like, you know, finding Bigfoot naked and afraid, you know, expedition yeah. unknown. He, yeah. he does like, well, he does all that shit. As, as a matter of fact, they just, they just came out of the, the jungle in Colombia um, they just they just went on some big crazy shit like in Colombia and yeah. uh, you know fucking I mean, hiking, like, hiking through the fucking jungle for three days you know yeah it's it's kind of, it's like one one of the things that you watch the show you kind of jealous of that job but at the same time you kind of like I don't know some of the situations look pretty hairy to me man you know yo it's, <laughs> it's hard living bro it's it's, it's like hard. Yeah. it's like it's like it's like being well. It's like being if like if we had to get in the van with a bunch of our friends like and, and, and tour in a van again, you know, like fuck that, you know. Yeah, yeah, except you're going to like Nepal and <laughs> Colombia and Vietnam, you know, it's all these fucking crazy places, man. I, but I you, you, I love that you, you had him on the show. I thought that was great. That was you awesome. know, one, one last thing on that though, but he they just went with William Shatner. And like went in the shark cage, and William Shatner is fucking ninety years old, and they just did an episode with William Shatner, and that was a dream is because growing up we were big Star Trek fans, you know. Right. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah man. That that that's awesome, and and I know that um, both of you guys did all like a lot of videos uh, yep. throughout your whole careers, man. That's that's super yep. cool. But uh, um, I I really didn't knew until I saw your show that he was involved with Josh. Um, yeah. Josh, I I knew I seen the shows with him, but I didn't know he was your brother. So I was like, yeah. no, no way. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> Drew's brother. What the yeah. fuck? You know, kind of like I kind of flip flip out on it. It was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, let's talk about this a second. Like, like for me, as like a, as a hardcore guy, like, and I could speak for a lot of hardcore like hardcore people. This was the record that really spoke to us, man. Like this record had a lot of hardcore overtones. Was was oh, was yeah. that? Uh, intentional or what's the background on that that just happened i mean it was the it was the time of this a lot of the stuff we were listening to it a lot of you know coming coming out of the the, the new titans tour with sick of it all um and then it was the era biohazard was hitting hard at that time yeah. you know yeah. urban discipline and we love love all that that stuff so uh, i mean evan ended up uh, co-writing the the lyrics of, of um Slave New World, mm -hmm. um, and then we got Jello Jello Biafra on uh, Biotech is Godzilla, which was was great. You know, we mm -hmm. Jello Jello was an old friend. Used to come to every uh, Sepultura show. Every time we play San Francisco, Jello was always there, man. And so we we end up inviting him to write uh, 
write the lyrics for for biotech is godzilla and uh i, I don't know it, it, it just it, it was just one of those special made records you know with all those influences we kind of slow everything down it, it, it did it you know you're still going real fast but now the the breakdowns are you got that that new york hardcore breakdown yeah. parts that are there for punishment reasons you know it was and, and i love and i love uh, you did you did policia that was awesome you know yeah the, the brazilian brazilian punk. that ripped that that fucking track ripped man you know yeah thank you yeah that was that was yeah. fun man like i said this record was recorded in wales uh with andy wallace which is like a master of recording yeah um and, and everything about it was uh the, the stuff we were listening to it because because I was involved in two records at the same time I was doing chaos and I was doing nail bomb right uh, and nail bomb was like this like my side project type thing with Alex from fudge tunnel um and that was way more underground but Roadrunner put both of them out uh, but yeah so yeah that's that's nail bomb in Holland that's like yep. the dynamo dynamo show that was with biohazard that was that was uh, the infamous Dy dynamo 1995 show that was like the roadrunner dynamo you know yeah yeah hundred twenty thousand people it was like yeah. the record they never Fucking they never got awesome. it so big yeah they never got it this big and yeah. we had we had evan coming in the end of the show we had yep. um we had scoot from doom playing bass in one song um we had Dave from Neurosis. He played. We we built up a whole band just for the show, which was great. Have guys from Frontline Assembly, um, Tribe after Tribe, uh, Peligro from the Dead Kennedys drumming. Right, DH. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, we Three got drummers. a shout out. We got a shout out. Billy Page, who was Biohazard's drum tech. What's up, Billy? How you doing, man? Hello. You come, Hell yeah. You come to the right place. What's yeah. up, Billy? Yeah. It's so, so yeah, yeah I, I love, I love, I remember watching Biohazard for the first time in New York. It was like, fuck, yeah. Yeah, they were floor, floored it, man. It was like, yeah. yep, we've seen some crazy shit here. This is, this is some new like, next level shit. <laughs> I was around for that ride, man. It was, it, it was, it, 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 it was, it was a great ride. And then, you know, also, um, it wasn't, it was kind of soon soon after that that i had the opportunity to work with you guys i produced this uh through my company stone films nyc you guys yeah. you and gloria sent me this whole box of of videotapes that you shot on the road you mailed me this whole box of yeah. like a hundred like <laughs> videos with like you know numbers all oh, screw and we transferred all of them and we sat in the edit room and we put this whole thing together and it was it was awesome, and uh, Paris Mayhew, it. yeah, Paris Mayhew from the Chromags, who has an incredible attention to detail. You know, he 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 really put it together. I produced it through my company. You know, I, I kind of threw the party, but we, you know, I was really honored to to be able to work with you at that stage of your career. Thanks, and I'm I'm so proud of it. this thing. Came out so cool. It's like, you know, uh, it, it's it's like the early days of of uh, of documentary. Yeah, style, yeah, yeah. Style of things, man. Then you guys, you guys did great. You still, you watch that right now, and it's it's fantastic. It's it's an amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, and I remember before I did this, uh, when I mentioned to Gloria that I was going to be on your show, she mentioned to me that she's she's been reading Dana's diary. You know, Dana was was murdered in '96. You know, yeah. and and he mentions you in his diary, man. Oh. Yeah, it was it was like a, it was a biohazard show at the whiskey. Or something, and you yeah. you were there with with Sand Dog, and you guys got in a fight with some yeah, asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, it was like it says that on on his diary. It was was it was really. Oh really man, cool. that's heavy, man. That that really that chokes me up, man. Yeah, it was. Uh, he was, it was a good amazing. Kid, man, Dana was a good kid, man, and 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 I have in my notes. You know, I was thinking of 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 what an appropriate way to bring it up. You know, because right. You know, we we spent we spent a lot of time with Dana, you know, your stepson, and glorious son, and he was a part of our Biohazard crew there for a while, and yeah. he was there when they recorded the record, and he's in the video that we did um, uh, after Forever from the after Black Sabbath. Yeah, Dana, yeah. Dana, Dana's right in the in the in the beginning of the video, man. He was he was a good kid, man. He he was so excited when he came from the from the oh. shot of that video. Because he got Bobby to wear the, the nail bomb shirt, like yeah, that's right. That's, that's I got right. 
I got Bobby to wear the nail bomb shirt. This is so cool. And the video was great. Ooh. You know, it was it was a it was it was an amazing, an amazing experience. And it's so cool that he wrote that down in his diary, man. And it was 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 really Yeah, um, man. That's that's that means a lot, man. That that means a lot. It really does. It, it I was I was I had it in my notes and, and I wanted to bring it up appropriately and just say that I remember Dana and we spent we spent a bunch of time together and and and, and I cherish that man. He was a good dude, man. You know? Yeah, yeah, he was, and, and was, um, he he kind of like he showed me so much cool stuff. It was it was like uh, I I I think even even early clutch. I never heard of clutch before. Yeah, right. Um, right. Deftones. I know you're gonna have Sergio on your show. Yeah, Sergio's um, coming. Out, yeah. I remember the first time he showed me Daftones, and I was like, "What is this?" You know, he had a cassette, <laughs> he had a cassette tape, oh. and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was it was oh. great. It was great. Like he's like he, he you know he would have been an amazing A and R guy if he, yeah you know if, if he would have continued that, that. He that. always at that time he had his ear to the street. He was like he was the one that turned me on to was it Orgy? Remember Orgy? He's like, yeah, all, 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 yeah, he, yeah, all that stuff. It was always into like, like different stuff all the time and showing, yeah. showing me stuff. And, uh, you know, like we're going to have the history coming up in September is the 25th anniversary D Lo show in Arizona. We do one every year. When is that? When's that happening? September 25th. Yo, bro, I want to come down. Yeah. I'm going to put it on my calendar. Yeah. So it's at yeah. the Marquee, it's at Marquee Theaters here in town. Um, we got a bunch of, we're trying to get a bunch of uh, get, go ahead and die is gonna play. We gotta be our first show ever. Oh wow, which is, which is cool. You know, like we're never played before, so this is gonna be our first show. September twenty fifth. Yeah, that's yeah, far it's... enough in the future, man. I, I'd like, I'd like to be there, man. Yeah, yeah. man, that would be yeah. that would be really cool if you come. Well, you know what? That was the third time. I think the third time I ever cried on the show, bro. That was it, man. Yeah. It means yep. a lot, man. It does, Appreciate man. You. It does. Hey, let's uh, let's take a break and and, and 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 catch our breath, and we'll come back and we'll do album of the week with Sid the Kid. Okay. Awesome, man. What's happening? This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, a very heavy episode of the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we're glad you are here with us. It means the world to us, man. That 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 you're here. Um, I want to say before we move on, uh, the show could use your support. There's a Patreon page. There's also a PayPal address there. Please support the show. Don't be a lurker. Come out of the shadows. Uh, your support is what makes this happen. It really does. I mean that. So please, uh, I want to shout out um, a couple of new patrons, Zachary Kinney, uh, Timothy Re Reichel, as in, uh, Reichel, as in Michael. What's up, Tim? I know you're out there, bro. Thank you for your support. Derek Moomin, Ray Hogan, uh, Jorge Rodriguez, uh, and Linda Nardelli. Thank you all. Uh, and please, uh, don't, don't, be, uh, don't be shy. Yo, I want to shout out Brett the Bookie, my neighbor. I love you, bro. Um, we still got to get you on the show. Brett the Bookie, it's Sunday shout-out day. So, uh, so there you go. Um, that part of it. Um, I want to, what else? Oh, I want to announce, I want to announce a couple of shows real quick before, before we bring, uh, before we bring Sid on. Um, here we go. We're pulling out some heavy hitters here, man. So don't be scared kids. How about Wednesday, July, Wednesday, July 21st, long time coming from DOA, Joey Shithead's coming on the show. Uh, he's a politician these days. He's got a lot going on. Awesome guy. Joey Shithead. Get your shoes and socks on, kids. It's right around the corner. Also, episode 134. Um, where am I? Hold on. Episode 134. Uh, Rob Dukes from Exodus, formerly of Exodus, and... Generation Kill, Rob Dukes, an another Arizona dude. I got to ask Max. I think, I think, right, yeah, Rob's another, yeah, I had dinner with him down in Arizona for sure. So Rob Dukes coming on the show. Uh, that's going to be great. I got a little bit of history with him. You know, Generation Kill supplied some of the music for the, who the fuck is that guy? The Fabulous Journey of Michael Alago. 
Yo, and here's one. Get ready. You ready? You ready? Come on. I'm excited about this one. This, this one hasn't been announced anywhere. Wednesday, August 11th. Here we go. Legend, Glenn E. Friedman, the photographer, author, producer, took the iconic photos of Black Flag, the Beastie Boys, the Bab Rays, Minor Threat, all the skate photos, Run DMC, Public Enemy. Yo, what's up? What is up? Yep. Can you believe it? Great shows coming up. Glenn fucking Friedman. This is going to, I'm excited about this one for sure. Absolutely, absolutely stoked on that one. Um, yep, way, dude, way. It's happening. Good things are happening. A year and a half later, you know, so thank you all for supporting the show. What can I say? And listen, I, I know, listen, I know shit, you know, people come and go with this fucking thing. Um, you know, that's how it is. But, you know, there's some real staunch supporters of the show. And and thank you so much. What can I say? You know, tomorrow's my birthday and I'm going to have a great birthday. So, so thank you. Yeah, I'm stepping up. Bro, I'm always stepping up because people believe in the show. Make it happen, you know? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, okay, let's do that. Um, there is the Patreon page. What else? Uh, there, if you're watching the show in, in rerun, there is a subscription button there, right about there. Subscribe to the show so you get alerts when shit's going down. Um, shows are starting up at the A7 again. The Rampage Mosh Fest. Um, I'll say, I will say this show. I, I will say this. Um, a seven is opening up again with the rampage mosh fest. We're booking shows again at the a seven. We're going to get it going. If anybody out there wants to play the magic room, reach out to me. You know, uh, this is what's kicking it off. Uh, we're going to, we're going to start doing probably one a month. And then I'm sure it's going to get crazy again like it did before the pandemic. But also I want to say to anybody out there, feel free to reach out anytime. I want to hear from you. Who would you like on the show? What did you like about the show? What did you think sucks about the show? I can handle it. I'm a big boy now. I can handle it. So um, that said, Dustin Harmon, thank you, Drew, for doing these. Well, it's what I do now. I'm a fil I'm a filmmaker, I'm a musician, and I'm a goddamn motherfucking talk show host. <laughs> Go figure. Um, it's a crazy world. That said, um, love when this show gets the feels. This is that this is this is a show, you know. Tomorrow's your birthday. What is everybody with a stone name? Tomorrow, what what is, you know? There you go. Um Oh, yeah, yesterday we did the hardcore brunch. It, it was fun. That said, let's clear the deck. What the heck? Uh, oh, oh, you know what? We're doing super chat. If you have a question for Max, uh, when it's question time, there's something called super chat. It gives you a chance to uh, um, put a couple bucks towards the show, and it comes in in color, and I can't miss it, and you go right to the front of the line. You know? Oh, you feeling this, Kango? Bro, this, this is my dope Kango from this one. Fuck with me and my Kangol collection. That said, let's bring our guests back on. Let's clear the deck and let's do album of, hold on, let me get rid of all this stuff. There we go. Let's bring Max back on. Hey, man. And let's bring Sid back on. What's up, Sid? What up, guys? How are you, buddy? Chilling, Drew. How, how are you guys doing out there? How y'all doing? We're having a heavy show, bro. It's good. Damn fucking yeah. right you guys are. Good, good. Hey, so let's jump right into it, and, and uh, you know, don't get crazy, Sid. All right. So hey, here we go. Fun day. It's a fun day, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. Sid the Kid. Here it is. Album of the week. Boom. Go ahead. Damn, bro. motherfuckers. Go ahead, Sid. Well, guys, you know, 
this band's always been talked about many a time on the show. So you know what? It had to happen. So, you know, one for the record that hasn't been talked about, but mentioned here, and that is finally has this moment. And as obviously you can see here, is the uh, Dead Kennedy's first full length record entitled Fresh Fruit for Rotting Vegetables. Uh, you know, this record was recorded at Mo Mobius Studios, if I'm probably butchered that one there, on, uh, I believe, from May to June of 1980 and was released on September 2nd, 1980. Originally released on Alternative Tentacles Records, which is, you know, Jello's label. Then later on was, I believe, distributed by Cherry Red. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Norm and DK's own guitarist, uh, East Bay Ray, produced the record. Um, you know, for this, you know, just really get this one out of the way really quickly, wondering how this record cover came about. It came from, I believe, uh, the night of the White Riots on May 21st, 1979, uh, which resulted in the light sentence given to former uh, San Francisco City Supervisor Dan White for the murder of Mayor George Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk. So when this all came about and the record came out, you know, Jello being the hype man that he is and, you know, just wanted to make, you know, a noise and name for himself as a publicity stunt, he actually ran for mayor at around the same time. And one of his policies, I believe it or not, was he wanted to erect a statue of Dan White where anybody could just get eggs, tomatoes and stones and just throw shit at it, you know, basically. But, you know, I digress on that. The record itself, you know, speaks for it speaks for itself. It's punk. But honestly, if you just hear that guitar, it's total surf all the way, but it just has a harder edge to it. And, you know, between East, East Bay Ray's guitar sound, songwriting as well, including with Klaus's, like, just bass, rhythmic bass tone to it, and obviously with Jello's voice, it just all melds into just this record that you, that you see here. And on a quick little footnote as well, Paul Rossler actually did keyboards on Drug Me and Stealing People's Mail. And you're drug me, drug me. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, everyone's wondering who the fuck Paul Rossler is. That's just that's actually Kira Kira Rossler's brother. Well, what? Kira also played in Black Flag. Yeah. Really? I kid you not, dude. I, I told you I did my homework today. I did my homework. I'm not mad at you, Sid. You know, and you know, you know, some people either like this band or they don't, you know, but you can't take away like the impact that this band had on punk, especially within the United States. Here you go. Here, here, here's, here's the song. Yeah. yeah. Kill the poor for, you know, let's lynch the landlord. That's a classic. Oh yeah. Know? Drug me chemical warfare. Come on. I mean, Cal I kill, I kill Uber Alice, which everybody knows that song, whether you like it or not. Oh. Yeah. Holiday, holiday in Cambodia. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Let's lynch the landlord. And yeah. So, Max, did this did this uh, dead Ken this record or dead Kennys in general uh, resonate with you guys? Hell yeah! <laughs> uh, I mean, we covered Drug Me for uh, Alternative Tentacles. Did a uh, it was like a special edition um, anniversary record, and they got a bunch of bands to cover Dead Kennys, so we, and we picked Drug Me because it was all fast, <laughs> and uh, it was just it's a fast song, all the way fast. It doesn't slow down. Um, and I, I, you know, crazy lyrics about, you know, uh, prostitution and, and some, some other crazy, the, the drug environment. I don't even know it. I, I always love Jello's lyrics, but the, the record is full of great stuff. It's got, uh, Napalm Death doing, uh, Nazi punks, fuck off. And a bunch of, I think Fate No More is doing Let's Lynch the Landlord. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. 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 Man, you know, it's like it was it was big on us, man. That Kennedy's was always big. This I got I found this. This is a, a biography of Dad Kennedy's Brazilian. This is a Brazilian wow. book. Huh. I've that, never seen that, that. I've never seen that. That just talks just about this record. It's kind of like it's got cartoonish. Wow. Kind of stuff. I've never seen that. Yeah, it's pretty underground. Um yeah, it's uh, it came out in uh, it, it disco is ideal, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's really cool, man. It's got some pictures. Yep. Cool. Yeah. There you so go. I guess for that. Is that Paris Mayhew checking in? Besides Viva Las Vegas, it's a masterpiece. Yeah, it's a great record, man. Yeah. yeah. And 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 Dead Kennedys, uh, you know, like like to me, this record here really kind of set the table. But it, it was the, the record that came after this uh, in, in, in God We Trust. 
you know, that record with Nazi punks and, and, and all that, that record was, that was a hardcore record. That record really yeah. spoke to us when that came out, like dog bite and, and Cape home factory and, um, moral majority, that record really, that was like a hardcore, like it was almost like then bands like dead Kennedy's and the misfits, they went out and did hardcore records, you know, cause that, hardcore was really popping at the time, you know? Yeah, and, and Jell is a character, you know. It's like yeah, yeah. You should you should get him on your show. That would be really cool. How, let me ask you. Um, did you, how did you get him on KSAD? Did you just reach out to him? Like, how did that work? So yes, yeah, so he used to come to our shows all the time in San Francisco. You know, I back see. in the Omni when we played Omni and all this, all this other. You know, he was always there, and and we struck a friendship. And I remember one of the first times talking to him. He blew me away because he started mentioning all the presidents of Brazil. He knew every president that Brazil had it. Wow. And I'm like, I had no idea this. I, I know like three, maybe, maybe like three or two Brazilian presidents. He knew all of them, man. It was like, holy shit. It's like, you know, crazy stuff. And then he, he, um, he knows this. He knows he's, he's very, um, it's, he, he knows his history. He can back he up, does. he can back up his rhetoric. He does, man. And yeah. he knew all this shit about Brazil that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So we reach out to him to do uh, the lyrics for a song. Which you named the song. It's your song. We're just going to write the music. Right. So he, cre he he made Biotech is Godzilla, which is a great title. I love the title. And then he sent a cassette of him singing the song for me to sing like he sings. Uh -huh. And then he he does a uh, he does a scream in the middle that we sample right from the cassette. We put it right on the record. And after he came out, he got kind of mad at me. He goes, "If you if you would have told me, I would have made a better scream." And uh -huh. I say, well, "No, no, but it's the live one that counts. It's the demo, the demo scream that counts." You know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's great. And and just while while we're sort of on the KSAD thing again, I gotta say uh, the the music video for Territory that our friend Paul Rackman directed, man, yeah. that, that video at the time, um, it still holds up. You guys shot it in the Middle East. That was an incredible video that, that, really, uh, th that really struck a chord. It, it really caught people's attention. Uh, and, any memories of like shooting that video in the Middle East? Yeah, I think we were there for like two days and, and a lot of the, 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 the shots were real early in the morning because we gotta kind of got to get the sunrise. So some of the shots are like at four or five in the morning, getting up real early. Uh, I remember I had my son Zion. Zion was only two years old uh, with me at that time. And we took him to the top of the Masada. We did some some shooting there. That's when I'm upside down. Oh, um, that's in Masada? Yeah, that's in the, the top of the Masada. Oh, and, wait. Yeah, go on. Go on. Yeah, and, and it was crazy because Zion was eating the sand of the Masada. I look oh. at him and he's sitting on the ground eating the sand. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, oh shit, this is crazy. And uh, now it was cool, like drinking the tea with the Bedouins in the desert. That was like one of my favorite shots, man. That was like some some crazy shit. That's kind of like... Like going to the tribe on roots, you know, it's like one of those things that it's not even metal anymore. It's like National Geographic type shit. <laughs> I got, I I got remember, go on, go on. Yeah, I remember uh, there's there's a part where we got all mud. We were, we were full of mud in our yeah, faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and was, that in the, was that in the Dead Sea? That's in the Dead Sea, so it's very yeah. salty. And I had yeah. a couple cuts right by my leg, kind of oh. like, like, kind of like near my balls. I had a bunch of cuts. And and that that sea salt water hit it when I'm screaming. I'm really in pain for real. Those all <laughs> those are real screams of pain, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Which is great. So you, you know, that's you know, that's since, the real thing. Since we mentioned Masada, here's a shot of me and my brother Evan up at Masada. The, uh, yes. the, new, the new movie that the new film that we have coming out. Uh, we shot part of it in, uh, in in the Middle East and in Israel, and, and here we are shooting up in Masada. You know, that's amazing, amazing. Yeah, it, it's it's a heavy place, man. You know. Yeah, and we're I don't think we were allowed to film in in inside Jerusalem. Right. So we couldn't really go into the you know the the the, the churches or all the stuff right. that we wanted. So we right. kind of we kind of shot it kind of outside, looking at Jerusalem. Right. I mean, there's a scene where Igor writes uh, Sepultura on a on a wall, 
somewhere outside yep. Yep. Jerusalem. There's a tank. There's some soldiers. It's a cool video, man. I love. I love the. It's, it, it, it was at that time where um, people were getting really creative with 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 videos, and this is one of those yep. like even the ideas of having us just standing there in the mud, which is like I don't know. I think maybe that that was Paul's idea, but. Just looks fucking great. Just looks like really crazy and and, and this shot with, with this shot with the sand coming through your hand, you know, like yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's visual, visually, it's just a fantastic. It's a fantastic video that that really was, uh, you know, was inspiring for a lot of people. Just just as far as in the creative uh, video world, you know, it was like definitely pushing the boundaries and doing some different stuff. And and and, and Paul Rackman, we we like Paul Rackman. It, you know, he did Alice in Chains, Man in the Box, and he did Bad Brains, Soul yeah. Craft, and so you know, yeah, it was good shit, man. You know? And we won, we won an MTV award in Brazil for that. So that Is was that right? That was a, yeah, it was, it was that was great. Um, you wanna wanna grab that clip right there? Um, so so that was like uh, you know, MTV in Brazil was heavily into Sepultura. All of a sudden, we became like the darlings of yeah. MTV, MTV Brazil. Yeah. So they're, they were playing our stuff and and uh, you know getting getting up a lot of a lot of video play. So we end up winning this. This is the it's oh a clip. wow! See, it's a video clip, so it's a clip. That is awesome. There you, there you go. That's cool. I never saw that. Yeah. So so you know, really, really great things came out of that, man. It was uh, it was it was fun. It was it was a lot of work for two days, but. <laughs> But it's it's kind of it was cool. It was kind of like the guerrilla style. I remember the a lot of the, the things was like I think my brother even talked about that when he did the show with you. Like the guy with we we trying to sneak out of the country so they don't confiscate the tape. So we send one guy with all the tapes back to America. So he's not even traveling with us. So if they the airport people don't go through our stuff and find a bunch of videos. Because right. they we, we didn't have permits to make a video in Israel. We never got it's like guerrilla video, guerrilla footage sh footage, you know? No permits. Fuck it. Just That's go that, there and, and shoot and it. As, and as a as a music video producer in that era, that's a bold move. To oh, to to, yeah. <laughs> to to fly to fly everybody in and, and to fucking roll the dice to, to shoot and not have a fucking permit, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then we had a guy that flew in. And flew out with the tapes. Yeah. So right. separate separated from us. Make sure the tapes get back to America so he can put the video back together. And uh, yeah, so it was good. And, and, and speak speaking of that, here we are shooting at the Western Wall with no permit. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Here we are shooting the new film at the Western Wall with no looks, permit. <laughs> so, so what is what is that? Is that a, a, you guys making a movie coming out? Yeah, I'll send you the trailer. We have a new awesome. A new, yeah, I'll send you the trailer. Yep, it's uh, yeah. it's being it's being cleared. Now. It's dealing with all the clearance now, and and it's really it's really my musical journey. And um, we shot in the Middle East. It, it's it's a really cool film. I'll send you the trailer. Yeah, and then a couple yeah. years later, uh, after that video, I play Israel. We opened for Ozzy. Oh in, wow! Uh, in Jerusalem, there was like I don't know, like thirty thousand people. Uh, they, it was insane. What a great metal scene they had there, man! It was it was incredible, incredible. Like yeah, kids it, were going it, going nuts. Absolutely. When when we when I was over there, not to shoot, but when I was the, the time before that, we screened the New York Hardcore. We screened the New York Hardcore Chronicles film uh, in 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 a, in a in a in a venue there, and it was packed and people we're really appreciative because Israel's a yeah. little bit out of the way. You know, it's not like, Oh, we'll go stop at Israel. It's on the way over. You really have to go out of your way and spend the money to go to Israel, like to play or to do anything. And people are really appreciative when, when you make that effort. I know biohazard's been there and, and sick of it all has been there and, and people really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. We went there with Soulfly and, or with, and Soulfly and Ozzy and some of the bands. It was, it was cool. It was, and everybody that kind of came to me always mentioned the territory video. <laughs> Like I love that video. I love that you guys put our country in your video, and it's like it's iconic, man. It's, uh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Hey Sid, good job. What else you got? I just want to give a shout out to everyone just watching. You know, especially you know, hip hop, hardcore, punk rock, metal, thrash. It all comes around one thing: the underground scene. That's where it all comes from. Very great poignant. choice. Very great poignant. choice on the album, man. That's a great record. Great choice. 
Well, well done, Sid. We'll somebody to told you soon. something earlier, but I'm not going to say it on the show, though. True. I know. <laughs> no, I, I told his brother-in-law. I told I told his his son-in-law, and it, it, it's it worked out fine. I'll talk to you later, Sid. All right, cheers, guys. All right. All right, there you go. Let me let me let me let me clear the deck. You know, speaking of, speaking of clips, right? I have this clip lined up. Let's play this clip and let's talk about this and let's have a laugh, okay? All right. Now, Igor looks spooked here. What's going yeah. on? He's mad about something, man. He was always <laughs> mad. He, he, he played mad. He's mad. He, he, he wrote names of people who didn't like it on the tongs. So let me get this straight. Is there no PA here? Yeah, the opening band, Transmetal, they blew up the PA. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is in a Lucha Libre arena, you know, where they do Lucha Libre? Yes, of course, of course. So, of course. so we go to the dressing room, there's a, a, a Virgin Mary statue, a bunch of, of, of Lucha Libre masks, like an altar. And I guess this is the place where the Lucha Libre guys, they pray before they go fight that's that was our dressing room you know we're like oh, this is heavy this is some heavy shit um and then i love that circle pit there's so much love in the circle pit. they're they're you know they're hugging each other and doing the pit almost like hugging you know that it's a it's it's yeah. a great it's a great circle pit there's no pa that's probably why igor is mad about it yeah. uh, it's great yeah yeah. There's the homemade banners. Yeah. This this footage is like legendary now. <laughs> yeah. Like, like this is like legend. This is like legendary. This, the, the whole fucking show is 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 leg is become legendary. Yeah, know? no PA. So it just shows you don't need a PA, man. You just need <laughs> all, the, the whatever power comes out of it. Yeah, yeah. And the, the power. Louder. Yeah, they're singing louder. I mean, and and that song we're playing that's that's called "To the Wall." That's from Schizophrenia. Right. Um, that's a very underground song. We don't even don't even even play it. We should bring that back to the uh, set list when we go on tour. It'll be awesome. Um, but yeah, those uh. That was a that was a crazy night. Um, I remember I got I got drunk afterwards, and I was wearing like a, a devil mask in Gloria, and I was puking on the shirt. I had like drink. I was drinking some green shit. I don't with tequila or some shit. We did an in store the day before that. Five thousand people show up for the in store. Oh. So it started at noon. I think it was like nine o'clock at night. It was still going. The promoter brought tequila and beer and what so we all just got drunk <laughs> during the during the in-store we just got loaded ah, like a bunch of vikings man it's fucking great hey great time great time oh oh, oh, oh to be young again right <laughs> yeah so great time um we're gonna let me think i, I want to make sure i got so i mean a couple people asked about your relationship with this guy here maybe you can give us a little perspective Another another really beloved figure, uh, Lemmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we had we had a, a love and hate relationship. We just really a uh, bit unusual and more different than most people. I think had a relationship with Lemmy. Um, 
like the first time I met him was in a in a London bar. We went there on a day off, and he was there playing his little video machine, oh. the little little poker thing. Of course, bro. <laughs> and we're sitting in the table, just all the all the Sepultura guys on a corner, and like there's Lemmy, you know. And I was like, we gotta go talk to him, like you know, who's gonna <laughs> who's gonna go talk to him, you know? The four of us, we keep drinking to get liquid courage. I uh, finally get the I finally get the courage, like okay, I'm going. I'll go talk to him, and I go, uh -huh. hey, hey, Lemmy. I'm, I'm Max. I'm from Brazil. I'm from Sepultura. It's like, leave me alone, man. I'm playing my game. And then he pours the whole whiskey in my head that he's drinking. I come back to the Sepultura table like, I just been baptized. <laughs> <laughs> the, the god of rock and roll had just baptized me. I'm never washing my hair ever again. You know, one of those fucking moments. Uh, and then we go to a tour with them, and they, op they offer us a tour in Germany. And there was a photo shoot we were supposed to do, and I, I was I, I, I got drunk before the photo shoot. I show up with a bottle of wine. I'm throwing wine all over. You know, it's getting on him. He's getting super annoying with me. It's like, oh, my God, this guy's, what the fuck is going on here? You know, and it was like a Kerrang photo shoot. And, uh, yeah, so is, th is this is... It? Yeah, this is at that bar. <laughs> yeah. So this is the this is like before we left, we took a picture with him, and uh, you can see my face. I have the whiskey in my hair, but it's like Ooh. I never washing that ever again. <laughs> wow. Yep. So and then and then we wanted to we, we did a cover over Gasmatron. That was awesome. One of their songs, you know, like like again, we want some other shit in Brazil MTV. Award again, um, bro, you all, bro. You guys, you guys. Actually, that 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 um, orgasmatron in Third World Chaos, um, you know, Paris put together uh, a great sort of clip of that in, in, yeah. in that in that long form video. You know, I don't want to say you guys owned that song, but you guys did that song justice, man. You guys did a really really great version of orgasmatron. It, it yeah. was great. Yeah, it was it was cool. It was a cool version, and and I remember recording it super drunk. I wanted to get lemme spirit, you know. I I always had I always had this this symbolism things when I do things like I gotta catch the the, the guy's spirit. So I drink a half bottle of rum. <laughs> I don't I don't remember recording orgasmatron. I remember wow. waking up the next day have a photo shoot. I can barely open my eyes, and that's the photo shoot that's on the back cover of our eyes. I'm like squint, squinting my eyes with the worst hangover ever. Um, you know, but we tried to play orgasmic on that tour and Lemmy wouldn't let us. Right. You know, and we were like kind of mad, man. Like it's our hero, but what do you mean he's not letting us play? And okay, maybe they will play then and we can go sing with them. And he's like, nope, that's my state. Nobody comes on my fucking stage. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh man. He always had that thing, right? Lemmy was like very protective of his stage. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, um, listen, the guy's super old school. You know, the guy like cool, Rhodes, man. guy yeah. Rhodes to Jimi Hendrix. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. How are you gonna How are you gonna argue with a guy? You can't argue. You know. Uh, but fuck, we whatever the fuck you want, bro. You know. We as a bunch of Brazilian Vikings at that time, we decided on the last night of the show <laughs> they didn't let us play. We bum rushed their stage <laughs> naked, naked, oh. only with so only with socks in our dicks. Like kind of like the chili pepper thing. Like the chili peppers, right? Right, yeah. And there was like seven, eight of us jumping naked on their last song. I poured a whole thing of of Cuba Libre on the on the guitar player's pedals. His pedals going, you know, shorting it out. He's fucking super mad at me, man. And then it was Lemmy's birthday. Gloria had to go talk to him after the show, and he, he just let her have it. Yeah, he was.